Earlier in the chapter, we mentioned that we are interested in Gaussian noise not only because they are analytically tractable, but also because zero mean Gaussian noise is the worst additive noise. In this section, we discuss why the zero mean Gaussian noise is the worst additive noise. What does it mean by worst additive noise? We will show that in terms of the capacity of the system, the zero mean Gaussian noise is the worst additive noise given that the noise vector has a fixed correlation matrix. That is, the zero mean Gaussian noise always gives the minimum capacity. In other words, those capacity results that we have obtained for the zero mean Gaussian noise can be regarded as the worst case results. For the scalar case, when we fix the correlation matrix, it is equivalent to fixing the power of the noise process. For the vector case, the diagonal elements of the correlation matrix specify the power of the individual noise variables. And the other elements in the matrix give a characterization of the correlation between the noise variables. Here is the main idea of our proof. We first consider a system which we call the zero mean Gaussian system. This is a system of correlated Gaussian channels with noise vector Z star, which is Gaussian with mean zero and covariance matrix K, and so the correlation matrix of Z star is equal to K. Let C star be the capacity of the system. Let X star be the zero mean Gaussian input that achieves the capacity. Let Y star be the output of the system with X star at input. That is, Y star is equal to X star plus Z star. We now consider another system which we call the alternative system. This system is exactly the same as the zero mean Gaussian system, except that the noise vector Z, which has the same correlation matrix as Z star, may neither be zero mean nor Gaussian. Assume that the joint PDF of Z exists. Let C be the capacity of the system, and let Y be the output of the system with X star as input, where X star is the same X star as in the zero mean Gaussian system. That is, Y is equal to X star plus Z. Now, for the zero mean Gaussian system, the capacity C star is equal to the mutual information between X star and Y star. For the alternative system, the mutual information between X star and Y is less than or equal to C, because C is the maximum mutual information between the input and the output, and X star is a particular input. We will show that I X star Y star that is, the mutual information between the input and the output of the zero mean Gaussian system with x star as input is always less than or equal to i x star y, that is, the mutual information between the input and the output of the alternative system with x star as the input. Then, we will have c star equals i x star y star, which is less than or equal to i x star y, which in turn is less than or equal to C. And so we obtain C star is less than or equal to C. That is, when the correlation matrix of the noise vector is fixed, the zero mean Gaussian noise always gives the minimum capacity. The main result that we need to establish in this section is formally stated in theorem 11.32. For a fixed zero mean Gaussian vector x star, let y equals x star plus z, where the joint PDF of z exists 
and z is independent of x star. Under the constraints that the correlation matrix of z is equal to k, where k is any symmetric positive definite matrix, i x star y is minimized if and only if z is equal to z star, the Gaussian vector with mean zero and covariance matrix k. We need to prove a few lemmas before proving theorem 11.32. Lemma 11.33 says the following. Let x be a zero mean random vector and y is equal to x plus z, where z is independent of x. Then the correlation matrix of y is equal to the correlation matrix of x plus the correlation matrix of z. As a remark, the scalar case of this lemma has been proved in the proof of theorem 11.21. The proof of this lemma is straightforward, and so the details are omitted here. Lemma 11.34 says the following. Let y star be a Gaussian vector with mean zero and covariance matrix k, and y be any random vector with correlation matrix k. Now consider the integral of f y star of y log f y star of y dy where y is from minus infinity to infinity. The lemma says that in this integral, f y star of y dy can be replaced by f y of y dy, where the integration is over the support of y. We note that a similar technique has been used in proving theorems 2.50 and 10.41 when we discussed maximum entropy distributions. In fact, this lemma is best understood in this context. Recall theorem 2.50, which says that the distribution P star maximizes the entropy of P over all probability distribution P on a support S subject to the constraints in equation 1. And here is the sketch of the proof h of p star minus h of p is equal to minus summation p star of x log p star of x for all x in S plus summation p of x times log of p of x for all x in S p. Then in the first summation, we replace p star of x over all x in S by p of x over all x in S p. Then by combining the two summations, we obtain summation x in S p, p of x, log p of x over p star of x. Namely the divergence between p and p star, which is greater than or equal to zero. Note that in the above proof, the key step is to establish that summation p star of x log p star of x over all x in S is equal to summation p of x log p star of x over all x in S p. Theorem 10.41, which is the continuous version and also the vector generalization of theorem 2.50, says that the PDF f star maximizes the differential entropy h of f over all PDF f defined on support S subject to the constraints in equation 2. Again, the key step is to establish that the integral of f star of x log f star of x dx over the support S is equal to the integral f of x times log of f star of x dx over the support S f. We also recall theorem 10.45, which says that for a given correlation matrix k tilde, the zero mean Gaussian vector maximizes the differential entropy. Then in light of theorem 10.45, we see that lemma 11.34 is actually a special case of equation 3. We now prove a very useful result called the data processing inequality 
for informational divergence. Let x, x prime, y, and y prime be real random variables such that the joint density functions fxy and fx prime y prime exists, and the conditional density functions fy given x and fy prime given x prime are equal. Then the divergence between fx and fx prime is greater than or equal to the divergence between fy and fy prime. The proof of this result is left as an exercise. The interpretation of this result is the following. Consider passing random variable x through the channel fy given x to obtain random variable y, and passing random variable x prime through the same channel to obtain random variable y prime. Then the theorem says that the divergence between fx and fx prime is greater than or equal to the divergence between fy and fy prime. We now prove theorem 11.32. First, recall that y star is equal to x star plus z star and y is equal to x star plus z. Since z star has zero mean, both the correlation matrix and the covariance matrix are equal to k. Therefore, z star and z have the same correlation matrix. By noting that x star has zero mean, we apply lemma 11.33 to see that y star and y have the same correlation matrix. Then the theorem is proved by considering i x star y star minus i x star y. This can be written as h of y star minus h of z star minus h of y plus h of z. In the next step, we write all these differential entropies in integrals. Specifically, h of y star becomes this, minus h of z star becomes this, minus h of y becomes this, and h of z becomes this. We now invoke lemma 11.34. In the first integral, we replace fy star of y by fy of y, noting that sy, the support of y, is equal to the set of real numbers because x star is a Gaussian random vector. Similarly, in the second integral, we replace fz star of z by fz of z. Then by combining the first integral, and the third integral, we obtain the integral of log of fy of y divided by fy star of y times fy of y dy. And by combining the second integral and the fourth integral, we obtain minus integral log of fz of z divided by fz star of z times fz of z dz, where the integration is over sz. Now the first integral is equal to the divergence between fy and fy star, and the second integral is equal to the divergence between fz and fz star. To complete the proof, we will apply the data processing inequality for informational divergence. To do this, we first recall the relation y equals x star plus z, but here we regard z as the channel input and the addition of x star to z as the channel. Thus y is obtained by passing z through the channel that adds x star to the input of the channel. Likewise, we pass z star through the same channel to obtain y star. Then, by the data processing inequality for informational divergence, the divergence between fy and fy star 
is always less than or equal to the divergence between fz and fz star. Therefore, we have shown that the mutual information between x star and y star is always less than the mutual information between x star and y. This completes the proof of the theorem.